feel planty good by incorporating silk into your morning routine. Silk's delicious plant-based beverages help bring a daily dose of goodness. They are rich in calcium and a good source of vitamins A and D to support the health of you and your family. Shop wherever you find groceries. Is this, the this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. I'm a for all the Grambling State alumni in the L.A. area and around the country, this is a fun time for you and your school. Grambling's men's basketball team playing in the NCAA tournament for the first time in school history beat Montana State Wednesday 88-81 to in overtime in Dayton, Ohio. Grambling is the ninth HBCU school to win a game in the NCAA tournament. Backup guard Jamel Coffer scored all 19 of his points in the second half to spark the Tigers to a comeback win. The Tigers were down by 14 midway through the second half. Early in the season, Grambling was 2-10. Look where they are now. Next up, a second-round matchup Friday night against Purdue in Indianapolis. Purdue is the number one seed in the Midwest Regional. The Clippers got back on track last night with a 13-point win at Portland, 27 for Paul George. James Harden had 14 assists. All I need is one mic. One mic. Reparations Now has been a rallying cry in this country and around the world for decades. But the demand has taken on new urgency with growing momentum on the issue led by the state of California, which has completed an extensive study and put forth recommendations to enact reparations. California's reparations actions have huge nationwide implications. The California Task Force was the first of its kind in the nation, and the states of New York and Colorado recently voted to take on the issue. Dozens of cities from coast to coast, including San Francisco, Boston, Los Angeles, and Detroit, have started their own reparations commissions. One of the first known reparationists was Callie House, who toured the nation advocating for reparations in the 1890s. But never in this nation's history has the movement to heal the harms of enslavement, institutionalized racism, and the system of white supremacy seemed so strong. The topic remains untouchable for most elected officials, and the call for reparations has not yet garnered widespread public support. Polling shows that most Californians agree that black fellow citizens are still suffering from the damage done by slavery and Jim Crow, but they still do not support cash reparations. The California Legislative Black Caucus has introduced a package of proposals for bills that do not include one penny of cash compensation, restitution, or repair. Governor Newsom and other lawmakers have distanced themselves from the concept of cash payments. While Newsom is right, cash alone will not repair our collective harm, the state's goofy legislative package ignoring monetary payments is disingenuous. California lawmakers need to step up and put a reparations bill for cash payments on the table. The issue of how it is funded, the timeline, or whether it impacts our current budget challenges can be addressed. But we must strike while the iron is hot or the window of opportunity will pass us by. If you agree that it's time for our lawmakers to add a bill enacting cash payments to their lineup, call them at 916-319-3868 and say, if it doesn't include cash, it ain't reparations. That's 916-319-3868. Tell him Cali House sent you. From Bruce's Beach to the California Task Force, the Golden State is a trailblazer when it comes to reparations. The world is watching. We must rise to the historical moment and set a precedent for cash payments along with legislative remedies and policies addressing the systemic badges of slavery and Jim Crow. We must insist on measures significant enough to help close the racial wealth gap. California must stand for cash, and the time for reparations is now. For KBLA Talk 1580, I'm Dominique DePrima. We welcome your comments.
That's India Ari. I am Tavis Smiley. I'm delighted to have you with us today in this hour of our program. And in this hour, speaking of strength, courage, and wisdom, uh, we'll be joined uh, by Navy veteran Daphne Wright on the back side of this hour for a conversation about her military career and working with the National Association of Black Military Women to change the system for black women. Uh, March, of course, is Women's History Month, and we continue our series of conversations specifically about women uh, and their role in the uh, history uh, making uh, of this country. Uh, we commence this hour, though, in conversation with sociologist uh, Brenda Moore about the historical contributions of black women in the U.S. military and, again, those contemporary issues that they face. Dr. Moore, good to have you on this program. How are you today? Hello, Tavis. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you on. Thank you for these uh, 30 minutes, and let me um, try, try to make the most of it. L let me start with this. When we when we think of the U.S. military, I, I, I think I can speak for all of us, although that's not my job, but certainly when I think of the U.S. military, black women aren't the first persons to come to mind for me. Oh, and as well they should. They why, do they come, why are they the first to come to mind to you? I, they, they aren't. I said they are not. They are not. Black women are not the first oh, person. Oh, not. Yeah, they're not the first ones to come to mind to me. Come to mind to me. Sh should they be? Oh uh, well, let me just say this. Okay. Um, African American women have always served in the military. Uh, not in large numbers. We know about the African American men, right? During uh, the Revolutionary War and sure. during the Union and, and what have you, but little is known about people like Cathay Williams, who disguised herself as a male and served with the Buffalo so Soldiers from 1866 to 1868. You know, we don't know that much about them, or the 18 women who served in World War I uh, as nurses. Mm -hmm. I think that um, World War II marked the turning point in the uh, representation of African-American women in the military. Mm -hmm. And that's very interesting because of the fact that women didn't have too much of an opportunity to serve in the military, period. Mm -hmm. We know that. Yes. We know that uh, the military has been a male-dominated institution. And World War II, because of the emergency, actually recruited women. There was a lot of, a lot of controversy around that. But what's interesting is that... African American women were accepted into the Women's Army Corps as soon as it was founded. And this was a result of a lot of political pressure. You know, you had the black publications like Pittsburgh Courier and the Crisis, founded by W.E.B. Du, uh, du Bois, who were encouraging blacks to join the military. You had uh, National Council of Negro Women, founded by Mary McLeod Bethune who was invited as a member of the advisory committee for the Women's Army Corps and was called upon to encourage educated Negro women uh, to serve. And so as soon as the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps was um, open, mm -hmm. 30 black women were among the 440 women who began training in July 1942. Yeah. So that was about 10.6% the quota sent, uh, that was uh, actually set by the War Department. And uh, the late historian and professor at Howard University, I don't know if you're familiar with her name, Dr. Martha Putney, mm -hmm. uh, she gave a detailed account of black wax in training centers and black units and field assignments during World War II. And what's interesting is that she herself was a commissioned officer in the 55th WAC Hospital Company stationed at Gardner Hospital in Chicago in 1945. Right. And so, you know, there's a presence. There's a history, of, yeah. Right, there's a history there. No, there, 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 there's, there's a, a great... 
I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not to cut you off. There, there, there is a history there, and I, I want to talk more about that history when we come forward. Uh, in addition to talking about that history, uh, obviously you are a sociologist, and I want to uh, let you also sound off on the contemporary issues that black women in the military face. Let me just go a step further than that, and, and I'll just tease this now. We'll, we'll, we'll get into it when we come forward. Um, I sense that the military is, this is my word, targeting black women and targeting black men. I see these campaigns getting much more aggressive trying to convince black uh, black men and black women to serve in the military. And I'm concerned personally about what I see as a targeting, number one. And then there's the, there's the, there's the question about why a black woman, given how badly this country continues, sadly, to maltreat black women, why would a black woman want to serve in the military? We'll talk about that and more when we come forward with uh, sociologist Dr. Brenda L. Moore, who you're listening to right now, and I'm glad about it, on Tavis Smile. This is getting good. Yeah, man. Tab is smiling. Tab is smiling. Continues when we come forward. 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 Hey, y'all. Mona Swain here from Target's new YouTube series, My Card is Full, where we feature black founders and creators highlighting their connection to our community. As an actor and content creator, I love using my voice to inspire young black women who look like me. When it comes to feeding my shine, seeing myself reflected in black-owned and founded products at Target brings me joy. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Learn more at Target.com slash Black Beyond Measure. Cookie wants to be a professional wrestler. I'm Cookie Serratos and I'm 11 years old. She also wants to win all the medals. That's why Cookie and her family make every day count, squeezing out her best with Go Go Squeeze. Okay, Cookie, let's break for a Go Go Squeeze. Go Go Squeeze fruit on the go pouches are a nutritious snack made from 100% fruit with no sugar added. Go Cookie! Because when you nurture your kids, you squeeze out the best in them. Squeeze out the best with Go Go Squeeze. Not a low calorie food. Products range from 11 to 13 grams of sugar and 60 to 70 calories per serving. Don't settle for bumps, ingrowns, and itch due to dry skin. Try Venus for pubic hair and skin. The razor and regimen specifically designed for your pubic area. Featuring a razor with patent irritation defense bar and skin care regimen that is dermatologist and gynecologist tested. Venus helps protect your pubic skin from shave irritation. Discover the full regimen of products at GilletteVenus.com. getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20, a Pfizer vaccine. So am I, because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine. It can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket, just like our customer, Jaren. I'm the singer and guitarist in a band, and I use my Cricket phone for everything. It's basically like another band member. Don't miss a single beat. Switch today and get a free Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. Smile, you're on Cricket. Real customer paid for testimonial must bring your number to Cricket on up to a $60 a month voice plan depending on device. Select models only while supplies last. First month service charge and tax due at sale. Cricket 5G requires a compatible device and is not available everywhere. Fees, terms, and restrictions apply. See store for details. Smart talk for curious people just like you. Just like you. You're listening to Tavis Smiley. 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 Tavis Smiley and Dr. Brenda L. Moore, who is a sociologist, a noted sociologist. Uh, March, as you well know, is Women's History Month, and so we are continuing a series of conversations throughout the month. Of course, we talk about talk about and to women all the time on this program, and I'm grateful for that. But because it is March, we uh, stepped up our game a little bit more uh, to uh, dissect a number of issues regarding history-making black women in this country. And when you think about the military, black women may not be the first ones to come to mind. But there is a long and storied history of black women serving in the armed forces of this country. And uh, we have Dr. Moore on right now and later uh, a Navy vet 
uh, uh, Daphne Wright, who will join us to talk about uh, these issues in this hour. So we talked a bit, uh, Dr. Moore, about the history, and I thank you for sharing that with us. But let me let me let me press forward on a couple of things, and we'll get to these contemporary issues that these black women face when they serve. But before I get to the the issues they face when they serve, two issues in front of that. One, uh, my view and my sense of this, I was in conversation about this with a friend of mine not long ago, is that that I'm 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 I'm, I'm feeling and I'm I'm sensing and I'm seeing that the military, and I'm, I'm talking across the board now, is being much more aggressive in their campaigns aimed at black and uh, black and brown, uh, but I'm talking about black folk in this moment, uh, black women and uh, black men, uh, convincing them, trying to convince them to serve in the military. Are you seeing the same thing, and do you share my concern? Um, yes and yes. Okay. You're right on target, um, uh, Tavis. Uh, in the 1970s, for the first time in American history, the percentage of African-American women on active duty in the Army increased more rapidly than that of white women. Mm-hmm. 1943, African-American women comprised like 5.7 percent of all women in the Army, but by 1993, their percentages had soared to 43.9 percent, almost wow. half. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The major factors leading to this expansion were the end of the draft, the the military draft, Mm -hmm. and the subsequent decline in the participation rate of middle-class white males. So with the onset of the all-volunteer force in 1975, military service began to heavily recruit minorities and women in an effort to meet personnel goals. Uh, This was especially true in 1979, when the Army fell short of its manpower objectives, and from 1989 to 1995, even with the drawdown, the number of black enlisted women increased in 1996. So I discussed these trends, and I was very concerned about them in uh, academic journals, and I also discussed it in the last uh, chapter of my book, "To Serve My Country, to Serve My Race." Let me let, let me let me let me let me let me jump in here for a second because I, I want to just this is my my role and not yours. And I I uh, <clears throat> I'm not gonna say I relish it, but I'm but I'm but I'm not afraid of it. But I want to make I want to I want to put a final point on this. And, and again, you help you're happy to comment if you if you so choose. What you heard Dr. Moore just say, and I want to underline this: you just heard her say when she gave those stats. What we are essentially looking at right now in this country vis-a-vis our armed forces is that black women are now replacing white men. The numbers speak for themselves. The data is incontrovertible. Black women targeted by the armed forces are now in a very significant and real way replacing white males in the armed services. I want you all to sit with that. For just 10 seconds. I ain't going to say enough for 10 seconds. Just process that. Well, I'd like to interject something here. I, I ain't done yet. One second, one second. I ain't done yet. One second. I'm sorry, Dr. Moore. I want people just to feel that, that black women are replacing white males. Now, this is in a country. You knew I was going somewhere with this, right? That white men are running up into the Capitol in insurrectionist behavior. White men are increasingly a part of these militias. White supremacy being pushed in our faces every single day. White men in the Republican Party and beyond talking about USA, 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 wearing the flag on their lapels, waving the red, white, and blue. All this talk about USA, USA, but their numbers to serve their country are decreasing dramatically, but the numbers of black women are going up. Now I'm done, Dr. Moore. You can take it. Okay. I wouldn't have said it quite like that. I know you wouldn't have. I know you wouldn't have. You don't have to, but say say it your way. Say it your way. I would say that the propensity of African-American women to join the military today is high. Uh, Black women comprise a disproportionately large percentage of enlisted women, In the active military, 40% of the enlisted women in the Army, 29% in the Navy, 25% in the Air Force, and 16% in the Marine Corps, while they make up only about 15% of the women in the general population. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason for that, I would say, is for 
those who are qualified to go into the military, the military offers economic security, mm-hmm. decent housing, medical benefits for military members and their dependents. One can enter the military without prior experience and educational benefits available to military members and her dependents. Additional benefits after service members complete their duty when they re-enter the civilian world are available as well. Now, you juxtapose that yes. for a minute. You juxtapose that with limited job opportunities for black adults in the civilian sector. Of the jobs that are available, wages are low, health benefits non-existent for workers and her or her families. Uh, military enrollees with no prior service constitute a young demographic, many of them just completing high school and are faced with supporting themselves for the very first time. So for them, the military can be viewed as much in the vein of what you talk about. I would call it economic conscription. Yeah, now, now, now see, now, now we're on the same page. We, we say, we're saying it different ways, but we're on the same page. I was waiting for you to pause there because, see, that I've heard that argument before, and it's a good argument. Let me be very, very clear. My father's probably listening right now. My father served uh, this country honorably for 37, 38 years. He was in the Air Force. So I am a military kid. I'm a military brat. I have uh, brothers and, 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 and nieces and nephews who served in the military. So I, I'm, I'm, I come from a military family. I literally grew up on a military base. So I, I, know, I know this experience. Having said that, what you just laid out does not sound to me like a choice. It sounds to me yeah. like you're being coerced in that direction. Here's my point. All those things you laid out about what the military offers offers are brilliant and beautiful things. I am not denigrating service in the military. Do not miss my point. My point mm-hmm. simply is this. They go in that direction because they don't have options in other spaces. And that makes a statement about this country that you cannot give us opportunities. Women, black women, we're talking about it's Women's History Month. You can deny these women opportunities in all these other spaces. But over mm-hmm. here, you give them this laundry list of all these good reasons why they ought to put their life on the line to serve their country. And it, it feels like bait to me. It feels like bait to me. Now, it's your turn again. Yes, I, I think you're absolutely right there. I mean, let's think about this. Traditionally, military service was both a right and an obligation of citizens. And full citizenship was reserved exclusively for white men. So service as a citizen soldier was once a powerful asset for candidates seeking election to the U.S. Senate, the House of Representatives. Military service was an integral part of citizenship. Now, at that time, racism obstructed citizenship rights for African Americans. The ideology of paternalism obstructed citizenship rights for women. They couldn't get in. Mm -hmm. Then. You know, but since the advent of the all-volunteer force, military organizations rely on monetary incentives to what we call procure personnel sure. and must compete with civilian organizations. So, therefore, middle-class white males are no longer drawn to the military as they once were. They don't have to go into the military to get a GI Bill. Mm-hmm. Think about it. Yeah. You exactly. know, that's creating opportunities. Mm-hmm. We can call it opportunities, but I— I agree with you. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't seem to be voluntary. Yep. I, you know, if you don't have options on the outside. You know, it's it, like some people would say, well, here are the opportunities for for black women to go in the military and to um and to succeed. Yeah. You know, at, at at a price. We know that the military is more than just a job. You know, it's not just a do- job. Yeah. You no, know, I take... and the, it raises when you have an unrepresentative military as right. we have. If you have a certain segment of the population that is um, more disproportionately represented in the military, it raises a moral question as to who's going to burden yes. national defense. Yes. Who's, going to, who's going to bear the burden of that? No, I, 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 it's, it's a powerful point. Um, I, I was thinking as you were talking uh, about the fact that we call it voluntary service. And when you really think about what Dr. Moore and I are saying in this conversation— 
it's not as voluntary as you think. For black women in particular, one could argue that it's involuntary, that it's the only option you have. It's the best option you have. That's not volunteering. That's almost, yeah. I gave a speech one time. Let me just pivot for a second. I gave a speech one time years ago, and the title of my talk was, Are You a Victim or a Volunteer? Are you a victim or a volunteer? I'll leave that right where it is. But this sounds a lot less voluntary to me uh, and more like bait because you don't have other options in these uh, neighborhoods, uh, ghettos, and barrios. I digress on that. In the last five minutes I have left, uh, four and a half to be exact, Dr. Moore, I want to come back to you and, and ask you to share, as I said I would, um, uh, your your sense of the contemporary issues that these black women face when they do decide, which is their right, when they do decide to serve. Right. Well, there is, I, I think you're right on target. I'm surprised that you noticed all of the heavy recruitment from the African-American community uh, and the ad. But um, there is a big recruitment in uh, the minority com community go to go into the military these days. And it would give the impression that everything is, um, everything is, uh, is on the up and up. And when I say up and up, you're going to, you know, just go ahead and progress. You're mm -hmm. going to have your benefits and what have you. But what it doesn't say, and we all know, war, you know, you can lose your life, but more than just losing your life, you can lose your limbs. You know, you can come back broken, mm -hmm. you know, whenever you're deployed to war zones. There's a heavy penalty to to uh, be paid for going into war. Mm -hmm. And so it's not as glamorous as uh, the services sometimes want them to make it uh, seem. Um, women, particularly when they go into the military, it's not just, it's still somewhat of a male, um, a, a male-dominated institution. Sure. And so women not, are not always um, accepted in their position in the military. So the services still have a very high rate of uh, sexual harassment. You know, um, there's sexual harassment, there's high suicide rates, there are, a for black women, uh, they voiced, some, some studies that I've done in previous years showed that black female officers felt that they weren't being mentored um, in the military mm -hmm. uh, as white, um, their white counterparts were, uh, that there weren't the opportunities uh, to advance, uh, although structurally, the um, uh, racism has been um, uh, eliminated structurally, but you know there's a lot of personal racism yeah. that enters, and it has it, is, it really uh, has um, a negative impact. You know, but what was interesting to me in one of the studies that I did with a um, with a Navy uh, commander, mm -hmm. we found that although African American women naval officers said that um, they, they had a whole list of grievances that right. they had about the military, they did they would re-enlist at a higher number. Oh, yeah. We said, that's a strange. Why are you re-enlisting? You have all these grievances. And what they said was that even though things aren't great here in terms of racial equality, sure. they're worse on the outside. Oh, yeah, well. It's hard to, <coughs> excuse me, it's hard to argue that point. And as you were talking, I was thinking about the data, the numbers that you shared with us earlier uh, about the dramatic increases of black women serving in the armed forces. Uh, you and I both know that their numbers in the rank and file are not anywhere comparable to the black women in leadership in the military. I can flip that statement, but the leadership uh, does not reflect uh, the numbers of black women that are in the rank and file, and that's a concern as well. I have to leave it there for now, Dr. Brenda L. Moore. I thank you for your work and witness and for these studies that you have done and continue to do as a sociologist. It helps us, helps us to better understand um, uh, what black women are doing and why they're doing it and why they're re-enlisting, why they're enlisting in the first place. Uh, it's a conversation uh, worthy of being interrogated, particularly given uh, the data, uh, which I underscore once again suggesting that black men proportionately are decreasing their enlistment, but black women are on the rise in a significant way, and I think that, again, deserves some interrogation. That's all I have the time uh, to talk about right now. Uh, but, Dr. Moore, thank you again for your work and witness. Good to have you on the program. All the best to you. Thank you so much. Good to have you on. When we come forward, we will talk to a Navy veteran who joins us live in studio, Daphne Wright. You're listening to Tavis Smiley.
More of Tavis Smiley when we come forward. Paid for by government.com. Did you know? The United States Mint has issued a new Morgan silver dollar coin in proof condition for the first time. Not only that, they are also minted in 99.9% pure silver for the first time ever in history. Coin experts are calling this an amazing opportunity for anyone that knows the enduring popularity of Morgans. But you must hurry. Only 400,000 of these legal tender silver dollars were issued. These first ever Morgan silver dollars are brand new with stunning mirror like finish. Minted by the iconic San Francisco Mint. Call now and you're guaranteed a new first ever 99.9% pure silver proof Morgan dollar. To learn more, call 1-800-973-9717. If you order now, you will receive a free coin collector bonus pack, a $25 value free with every order. Call 1-800-973-9717 now to secure your new Morgan silver dollars before they are gone. That's 1-800-973-9717. I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest from the Black Information Network. The Biden administration is announcing a new tailpipe rule that calls for the majority of new passenger cars and light trucks sold in the U.S. to either be hybrid or all electric by 2032. The new rule calls for a target of 35 to 56 percent electric vehicle production by eight years and a target of 13 to 36 percent for hybrids. The state of Georgia has executed its first death row inmate in over four years. 59-year-old Willie Pye was put to death late Wednesday by lethal injection after the Supreme Court denied his final appeals. Pai, who is African-American, was convicted of the kidnapping, rape, and murder of his ex-girlfriend. His attorney said his life should have been spared because he had an intellectual disability. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network, and BINnews.com. Need an accident attorney by your side? All you got to do is call the accident guys. Injured in a car accident or at work? The accident guys have helped over 5,000 injured clients with an impressive winning record. This is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. For all the Grambling State alumni in the L.A. area and around the country, this is a fun time for you and your school. Grambling's men's basketball team playing in the NCAA tournament for the first time in school history beat Montana State Wednesday 88-81 to in overtime in Dayton, Ohio. Grambling is the ninth HBCU school to win a game in the NCAA tournament. Backup guard Jamel Coffer scored all 19 of his points in the second half to spark the Tigers to a comeback win. The Tigers were down by 14 midway through the second half. Early in the season, Grambling was 2-10. Look where they are now. Next up, a second round matchup Friday night against Purdue in Indianapolis. Purdue is the number one seed in the mid West Regional. The Clippers got back on track last night with a 13-point win at Portland, 27 for Paul George. James Harden had 14 assists. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson on KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. I'm Reverend Gerald, the Life Coach. Is someone you love struggling with addiction and mental illness? Is improving your family's health important? Want to leave a legacy that your family can grow? Are you ready to enhance your perception of life experiences? Then wake up weekends at 7 a.m. with Urban Family Focus and get the wisdom, opportunity, resources, and motivation to live your best life. Join the conversation on Urban Family Focus Saturday and Sunday at 7 a.m. Unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black. Black. Linking social justice and climate justice all year long. We're unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. We heard you. You're hard at work when Tavis Smiley is on the air mid morning so we're giving you twice to Tavis. You can now tune in to Tavis Smiley weekdays at 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. Only on KBLA Talk 1580. On your period, sudden gushes happen without warning. But now, you can say goodbye to stand-up gush fears. Thanks to Always Ultra Thins with Rapid Dry Technology. It absorbs gushes two times faster than the leading store brand and gives you up to 100% leak-free protection. Hello, clean and comfortable with Always Fear No Gush. 
At Charmin, we heard you shouldn't talk about going to the bathroom in public, so we decided to sing about it. When you're rolling Charmin, don't you stop on the party. Nice. This is most of roll it back, everybody. Right. Charmin's irresistible soft and have a nice. A creep is always soft. It's our party vibes. Yeah. 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 So what you Charmin Ultra Soft is irresistibly soft and more absorbent, so you can use less. Enjoy the go with Charmin. <coughs> oh, this cold. Honey? <laughs> honey? Honey, you need Dayquil Severe Honey. Dayquil Severe Honey gives you powerful cold and flu symptom relief with a honey-licious taste. Because life doesn't stop for a cold. Okay, I'm ready to go. <coughs> now I'm getting a cold. Honey. Try Dayquil Severe Honey for powerful cold and flu relief. Dayquil Severe with honey flavor. The daytime coughing, aching, stuffy head, fever, honey-licious, power through your day, medicine. Use as directed. Keep out of reach of children. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Let's get back to more of Tavis Smiley right now. What an amazing conversation that was with uh, Dr. Moore. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we were going to spend the entire hour talking um, talking about um, uh, black women in the military. And I'm pleased to be joined now by Navy veteran uh, Daphne Wright. Daphne, how are you today? Can you hear me? Is your volume turned? Is your, is, can you can hear anything at no. all? How about now? How about now? How about now? Nothing? 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 Nothing yet? No. There you go. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> I can hear you. All right. So D Daphne is in studio. This is, tech, uh, speaking of, I, my first hour we spent talking about technology today. Uh, and if we can learn to use our own technology, Daphne's in studio. But her, she has her headphones on, but her volume wasn't turned up. So now that her volume is turned up, she can hear me and I can hear her and everything is good. First of all, how are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? If I complained, I'd be an ingrate. I am doing well and I'm glad to have you in studio. Let me just start with a broad question and then we'll jump into your backstory. So you heard Dr. Moore and I, you, you heard our conversation, some of that? I did. So I, I don't even want to color this first question too much. What, what did you hear that you want to comment on? I want to comment on, we use statistical data to support viewpoints. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, yes, not that black women are being baited, mm -hmm. bait and switch. Mm -hmm. That's what I call it. Okay. Because we're offered all of these things when we join and then we have to fight just as hard in the military when we get out as we did in the military mm -hmm. to get them. Mm -hmm. So one in two, you know, black women veterans are one in two times more likely to become homeless mm. when they get out of the service. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the economic security, education, and medical and housing. Once you get out, the benefits, a lot of times the benefits that were promised to you are not granted equity, mm -hmm. you know, across the board. Mm -hmm. um, we can take so many examples of that. You know, if we move, you know, the, 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 Housing, the economic security, the um, medical benefits, um, all of these things are four major things that would drive a African-American female to go, go into the military are the same things that a lot of times are being denied to them when right. they get out. Yeah. So I just wanted to make that sure. opposing point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, I hear your point. So it, I, it, it's, it's nicely it's nicely phrased. <clears throat> so you're saying it's not just a bait. It's a bait and switch. Yes. I got it. They, they get you in. They promise you these things. I mean, you, you, you don't realize them. When you get out, you have to fight just as hard for those things. Yeah, because you say, oh, I'm going to get this when I get out. Right. I'm going to get, you know, yeah, the yeah. housing loan. Right. I'm going to get, you know, support. Um. I'll use myself as an example. I had to fight 14 years to get my benefits, and I was state. I was at the Pentagon. Yeah. I was working for a, a three-star admiral, right. and I had to fight 14 years. So I can only imagine someone who wasn't in a job yeah. similar to mine um, trying to get their benefits. We were talking earlier, Dr. Moore and I were talking, as you heard, about um, the way that the armed forces across the board 
are aggressively targeting young black men, young black women to enlist. Um, I see that everywhere. Um, I note that you went in to the military at age 17. I did. Why did I you, did. you? So you you are one of those young persons. Yes, that they're, I am. That they're targeting today. Uh, you were then. Uh, why at 17 did you go in? Like you, I'm, I was from a military family. Right. You know, um, my stepfather, my mom was married when I was one month. He served 32 years in the Army mm -hmm. as a helicopter specialist. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, you know, it was such a great experience growing up, being a military brat, you know, living on base with, mm -hmm. you know, families. I wanted that same thing for myself. Right. You know, I wanted those opportunities to have education and, and housing and travel the world. Um, my family couldn't afford to just send me the college, you know, sure. we had five kids, you mm -hmm. know, so I said, this is an opportunity to take the burden, not, on, no, not only off myself, but off my family, yeah. and plus get a career, something I really wanted to do, um, yeah, so yeah. that's why I joined. You had, you had to fight for those benefits, as you mentioned earlier, 14 years, having worked for a three-star admiral, you still had to fight, you were at the Pentagon, and you had to fight, I, I hear that story loud and clear, let me just ask though, whether or not while you served, mm -hmm. While you were serving, did you enjoy your time? I did enjoy my time. I okay. made lifelong friends. A lot of them I'm still friends with today, mm -hmm. still in contact with them. However, there were challenges. Mm -hmm. There were challenges. Again, because I had experience, I, you know, was from a large military family. I knew what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I'm not going to battle with you. I'll let my congressman battle for me. Mm -hmm. I'll let my, my father battle for me. So, a lot of the things that I face, which I have faced extreme racism, discrimination, and harassment in the military. I was fortunate not to have any allegations of military sexual trauma, mm -hmm. but I was in a unit of 96 men, and it was five women. Mm -hmm. So um, it was an elite force. You know, I was a cryptologist in the Navy. And, um, yeah, I had to fly home from Spain to meet my congressman, um, J. Roy Rowland, at the time, um, and talk about what was going on. What was happening. What, what, what was happening. And, mm -hmm. you know, people were calling me Rosa Park, and it wasn't that. It was you have to just do, simply do what's right. Mm -hmm. I was taught you have to do what's right. It's mm -hmm. not a matter of, and I was even threatened to be kicked out of yeah. the military. Um, and I said, I joined on my own. I'll get out when I'm ready. So you you were a rebel. I was really, <laughs> I was labeled that, but I wasn't. It, yeah. it was really sim a, a simple ideology that I was raised with. Yeah. Treat people like you want to be treated yeah. and always do what's right. Yeah. And when, I, I mean, I, my, my case went all the way up to what they call Admiral's Mass. Mm -hmm. You know, you when you do something wrong, the Uniform Code of Military Justice usually is basically when you come to see me, I'm you're guilty yeah. because everyone under me has did the right thing. Mm -hmm. They, you know, in in civilian world, it's innocent until proven guilty. In the military, it's, it's other, other you way, are way guilty. Yeah. <laughs> you 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 are guilty. Yeah. But I was ready and prepared to yeah. um, fight my point and yeah. present that. So that's why I continue my fight through working for the Department of Veteran Affairs, right. making sure that there's equity across the board, making sure the underserved population is getting these benefits. Yeah. And a lot of times I'm on weekends, I'm out in the street recruiting. Are you a veteran? Mm -hmm. Hey, let me help you get your benefit. And that's what I do, and yeah. that's what I love to do. Let me let me for the, for the record. When I said rebel, I meant you were a rebel to them. I wasn't calling you a rebel, so no. I, 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 I take your take point. It that oh, way. good, good. I don't want to. I, I don't want to get in get, get into no uh, no scuffle with you about <laughs> no, me, me, no, me no. calling you out your name. That's no, not, that was no. not what I was what I was doing. Let me ask you right quick. If I go, I'm watching my time, if I move forward right quick, Doctor Moore and I also were talking about the fact that here again you fit this bill. You you fit the bill of the earlier conversation that you went in at 17. Yes. And she also talked about the fact that their research said that even when black women are maltreated, to a great percentile, they still re-enlist, and they re-enlist because as her data suggests, they feel that that situation. Is better than the situation outside. It's like you better to dance with the devil that you know than the devil that you don't know. So I know that even after all the drama you just laid out, that when it came time for you to re-enlist, you made a decision to re-enlist. When we come forward, I'm going to ask you, since you're here, why after all that hell you endured, you wanted to re-enlist. Her name is Daphne Wright. She is a Navy veteran working now for the Veterans Affairs, helping other people get the benefits that she had to fight to get. More with her when we come forward on Tavis Smiley.
Smiley. You're listening to Tavis Smiley. Tavis, Tavis Smiley. Ranked number 45 on the heavy 100 list of the 100 most important radio talk show hosts in America. What is dedication? My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that my kids wouldn't have a father. And I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. I definitely had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if if they can think it, they can do it. That's dedication. Visit fatherhood.gov to hear more. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Joey from Vermont. A farmer trying to get through the winter. Adriana from South Carolina. A single mother living paycheck to paycheck. Liam from Ohio, an injured father struggling to provide for his family. Hi, I'm Shinola Hampton, and I support the Feeding America network of food banks because they help provide over 6 billion meals to people in need each year. Learn more at feedingamerica.org. We must understand the politics of our community, and we must know what politics is supposed to produce. produce. This election year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the place for politics, unapologetically progressive politics, and we've got two of the best and brightest to help you cut through all the noise. Weekdays at 1 p.m., it's a more perfect union with Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte. And at 4 p.m., it's Ariva Martin in real time. He's the university professor and distinguished member of the White House Correspondents Association. She's a best selling author and Harvard trained civil rights lawyer. And they are both here every day to help guide you through all the sh this year because you know it's going to get deep. Get your politics on weekday afternoons at 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. with a more perfect union. Hosted by Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte and Ariva Martin in real time. Only on KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black. black. Don't shave with that, son. Y you'll get razor bumps. Nah, pops. I'm good with Gillette skin guard. How long you been growing that beard anyway? You know mama hates it. Yeah, had it since my last wet shave in 77. Got ingrown so bad, looked like I was growing a patch of new noses. That's why I use the Gillette Skin Guard razor, face scrub, shave gel, and moisturize. So I don't have to worry about new razor bumps or shaving irritation. Gillette Skin Guard, huh? <laughs> Your mama's gonna love this one. <laughs> Jim was at the laundromat when he heard... His ear said, Maraca, senor. But his nose said... Hey, freshest scent ever. Following his nose, Jim found a man pouring gain scent beads into the washer. The scent, the freshness. Jim blurted, Sir, your scent maracas smell amazing. You could call them scent maracas, but most noses call them gain scent beads. Try gain scent beads. Way fresher than detergent alone. He's rooting for everybody black. Everybody black. black. More of Tavis Smiley coming your way right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. More of uh, Navy veteran uh, Daphne Wright coming your way right about now. I'm watching my time, and I wish I had more time because you got some great stories to tell here. Let me just start with this story. After all the drama that you endured that you shared with us earlier, uh, when it came time to re-enlist, you decided to re-enlist. Why? Better on the inside than the out. Yeah. Better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Right. I felt like with... Being raised in the military family, enlisting myself, I could fight better knowing who I was fighting, what I was up against, than going out yeah. and just not knowing. It was the unknown. Yeah. A lot of women veterans stay in because, one, it, it really does provide security. You're going to get that check every two weeks no matter what. You have that financial security. You have the security of having housing, the security of education for your children. So that being tossed out yeah. or forced out is very scary for someone who that's um, all they know. No, I get it. Um, and just as you were reading listing, um, something happened. Yes. Tell me the story. Two weeks after I re-enlisted, I was hit by, I, I was stationed at the Pentagon, Fleet Ocean Surveillance Intelligence Forces, and I was going from the Pentagon to the Naval Security Station in Washington, D.C. A drunk driver came and hit me, knocked me unconscious. I was flown uh, medevac to George Washington University Hospital, and the Navy came and got me the next day and took me to the National Naval Medical Center in Bethesda. I had three compression fractures to my back, my sternum was cracked in two places, and I had bleeding on the brain. 
That was two weeks after I re-enlisted. And so? And so I did a year of therapy, and I was medically discharged. That was in 93, April of 93, and I was medically discharged. Supposedly, I was supposed to go in August, but they asked me to stay for two and a half months because um, being a cryptologist, you know, having a top secret SBI security clearance at the time, there was no one to replace me. Right. So I was actually um, asked to stay in until October to until they could find someone. I think they got this young lady from Spain right. to take my place um, on the team. And, so. And, so you, and you left with, with, with full benefits? No. What that's the, That's 10%. I was given. Hold, hold, hold up. After all that, you only left with 10% of your benefits? 10% of my benefits. Tell me the story. So um, the day before my medical board, um, they replaced the doctor that who was supposed to be on the board who I had seen, knew my case with a new doctor. They only granted me 10% for my back. I didn't get anything for my cracked sternum. I didn't get anything for my bleeding on the brain. I was just left out cold sent home to my parents at 23 with um you know not knowing what I was going to do and well, not, yeah see, let me let me just pause for a second see this is what I was trying to tell y'all earlier <laughs> about about why it it is it is an anathema to me you 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 served your country honorably you were you had a top secret clearance in, in the department uh, you're in the navy and you get hit by a drunk driver and they can't even give you your full benefits. Oh, they gave me a letter of accommodation. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> a letter of accommodation and 10% of your benefits. And right. this is why this story now comes full circle. And this is what you were referencing earlier when you said you had to fight for 14 years. I, ha I had to fight. And what and happened after that 14-year fight? After the 14-year fight, um, brain surgery at Cedar sinai with the top you know, African-American um, surgeon who came in and said, everything that's been done to you is wrong. Let me take over this case. He yeah. did. I had a successful surgery. I ultimately became a two-time Paralympic athlete for um, disabled persons with a traumatic brain injury. And, and setting records. I set two American records, yes, one for did. the javelin, one for the <laughs> shot put. I got over the anger because for 10 years I was unable to work, um, being misdiagnosed, going back and forth to medical treatment centers. And I, I vowed, I laid in that hospital bed. I was temporarily paralyzed from the belly button down. Mm. And I vowed to God if he gave me another opportunity at this thing called life, that I would do something different, that I would make sure that, women and military personnel placed in my position had someone like me to fight. You know, people people say I'm difficult. No, I, I, I want what's ours, period. Mm -hmm. And I was introduced to the National Association of Black Military Women. And through this organization, our stories can be told. Our, we can make an impact. And that is what I do every day. That's my fight. That's my light. We'll talk about that fight um, uh, in uh, the National Association for Black Military Women and her work at the VA in our remaining moments with this this amazing sister, Daphne Wright, when we come forward on Tavis Smile. Seeking the truth. The truth. Speaking, Speaking the, truth. the truth. This, this is the Tavis the Smiley, Smiley Show. Smiley Show. If you're like me, 60 and retired, making ends meet, especially here at the supermarket and drugstore is tough. I'm so blessed to have found BenefitsCheckup.org. It's a free and confidential website from the National Council on Aging that connected me to $1,200 a year in programs that help pay for food, medicine, utilities, and more. Maybe it can help you. BenefitsCheckup.org my daughter was diagnosed with a rare malignant rhabdoid tumor on the spine. They sent us straight to St. Jude. My hope was gone. But when you get there, everyone's like, hey, we're not going to give up. And when you see other people not giving up on your child, that makes all the difference in the world. When I found out I didn't have to pay, I was just grateful. They saved my baby's life. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. 
These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. What's up? <sighs> I'm tired of feeling so bloated. That used to be me. Then I got this. Align bloating relief plus food digestion. A probiotic, right? Yeah, it works naturally with your gut to help soothe occasional bloating and gas. Plus, it has vitamin B12 to aid digestion by helping convert food to cellular energy. Two benefits, one capsule. Align Bloating Relief Plus Food Digestion from the number one doctor-recommended probiotic brand. Get $5 off at AlignProbiotics.com. Why choose a Sleep Number Smart Bed? Because no two people sleep the same. Only the Sleep Number Smart Bed lets you each choose your individual firmness and comfort your Sleep Number setting. The Climate 360 Smart Bed is so smart, it actively cools or warms up to 13 degrees on either side for your ideal sleep temperature. And now, during the final days of our President's Day sale, save 50% on the Sleep Number Limited Edition Smart Bed, plus 10% off all bases. Ends Monday. To find a store near you, visit sleepnumber.com. KBLA Talk 1580 is the fastest growing talk radio station in Southern California, home to 50,000 watts and an audience reach of 12 million listeners. KBLA Talk 1580 is a pioneer for black audio content, including our groundbreaking $2 million climate justice campaign and the most loyal influential audience. According to an independent research study by the polling firm of Iteris, for the second consecutive year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the most trustworthy, reliable, and credible news source for black audiences and beyond in Southern California. Let KBLA Talk 1580 power your advertising dollars. Our omni-channel custom marketing solutions are specifically tailored to connect with your ideal target audience. We leverage audio, podcasts, streaming, digital, social media, and local activations to get your message out to the black community. Get in touch with our advertising team today at advertising at KBLA1580.com. That's advertising at KBLA1580.com. KBLA1580, we've got you black. More honesty than you can handle. More empowerment than you can imagine. You're tuned in to Tavis Smiley. Smiley. Tavis Smiley and Navy veteran Daphne Reed. Daphne Wright, that is. I'm sorry, Daphne Wright. Just a few other a few minutes left in this conversation with Daphne. Um, tell me right quick, that 14-year fight to get the benefits. So you, you hit by a drunk driver. You got three compression fractures, several cracks in your sternum, uh, a tear in the frontal lobe of your brain causing brain injury. You fight for 14 years to get beyond that 10% they gave you. What happened after 14 years? After 14 years, um, I was competing with the U.S. Paralympic, and uh, this admiral, you know, I couldn't go into the USO because at the time, you had to have a military ID to get into the USO, right. even though veterans were, are not allowed. Um, so she said, why don't you have it? And I said, well, you know, I'm only t-. She goes, no, 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 no. Have you reapplied? Yes, I've reapplied. And she stepped in. She told me what I need, what forms I needed to fill out how I needed to do it, step by step. And I, I really wish I could remember this lady. I know she was from Chicago because right. we, we were performing at the City, City of Hope Hospital in Chicago. So she, um, I did everything that she said, and I got received a check for $50,000 back pay. I received 100% benefits. My um, all the money I paid toward my daughter's college education. They gave you that back. They gave me that back and told me I had a choice between you know they paid all the way up to her master's degree. So I I felt vindicated, but not really. So that's when I said I'm going to make sure that this doesn't. This was in 2004. I start working for the VA and I've been there 21 years, and um, I'm very lucky to have a team of supportive supervisors. Um, I work in the SERS program, um, and between working at the VA, working for Community Engagement Reintegration Services, and the National Association of Black Military Women, it is. I've, I feel like I've come full circle with doing what God, what I promised God that I would do, is fight that fight. And this conversation has come full circle. We squeezed a lot out in 30 minutes, but you told that story. You told it brilliantly. The most important part um, is uh, that people hear um, what I think uh, is the best of black people. Uh, At our best, no matter how maltreated we are, we find a way to help other people. And that's what you're doing every day. It's a beautiful story. You can say one last thing in the 45 seconds I have left. Take it. Okay. So the last thing I want to say, if there's any women, especially women veterans out there that needs help, please reach out to me, Daphne Wright. That's all you have to put in. You'll find plenty on on Google. And (laughs) the National Association of Black Military Women 
they're going to have their 23rd bicentennial convention this September in Chicago, the 18th through the 22nd. Please, please join us at nabmw.org. Please join us, women. We need to make our story known, heard, appreciated, respected, and all of the above. That is I'm N- Daphne Wright. Yes, you are Daphne Wright. That is nabmw.org. N-A-B-M-W.org. Daphne Wright, this is quite a story. Um, and how we told it in 30 minutes, I do not know. We'll have to do it somewhere else down the road again uh, and get into greater detail. But thank you for your service. Thank, thank you, you for your story. And thank you for loving on these veterans. And thank you for your advocacy in the community. We appreciate you, Mr. Smiley. And we really, really do. As I do you, Ms. Wright. Uh, more of Tavis Smiley when we come forward. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest from the Black Information Network. The Biden administration is announcing a new tailpipe rule that calls for the majority of new passenger cars and light trucks sold in the U.S. to either be hybrid or all electric by 2032. The new rule calls for a target of 35 to 56 percent electric vehicle production by eight years and a target of 13 to 36 percent for hybrids. The state of Georgia has executed its first death row inmate in over four years. 59-year-old Willie Pye was put to death late Wednesday by lethal injection after the Supreme Court denied his final appeals. Pye, who is African-American, was convicted of the kidnapping, rape, and murder of his ex-girlfriend. His attorney said his life should have been spared because he had an intellectual disability. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network, and BINnews.com. Good source of vitamins A and D to support the health of you and your family. Shop wherever you find groceries. Is this, the this is the KBLA Sports Minute with 